joking my Keaton face for the thumbnail. I've been trying to get the Keaton a little bit. Nah, I can't. Can't do it. Uh, the closest I got was the thumbnail. Anyway, okay, this is Spoiler Corner. I had to talk about spoilers uh, for this movie. So, you know, obviously, if you haven't seen the film, you don't want anything spoiled for you. Uh, don't watch this. Go see it. This is also an area to talk about spoilers for the film. So, uh, you know, just keep all that in mind. With well, that said, Nicolas Cage is Superman! Oh my god, that was the moment I was talking about. I'm sure y'all figured it out <laughs> in the review when, uh... In the distance, I just saw a Superman fighting like a giant spider and he had the long hair and I just immediately knew. I was just like, <gasps> and I just went, Whoa! I started playing. I just assumed everyone, like, I, I don't know, like, was as big a Nick Cage head as me, <laughs> head fan or whatever. Uh, Nick Cage head? I don't know. Nick, Nick head? Cage head? I don't know what the term is, but uh, crazy excited to see that, even though, again, I don't know if he showed up for it. It looked very, very CG, and even if he was there, they'd have to do like, the de-aging thing or whatever. I didn't care. That's one where it could look as cartoony as it wants. Uh, but that is also the moment I was talking about where I was saying like the CG kind of gets in the way of a sentimental moment like when Christopher Reeves pops up and then they show I I'm sorry I'm blanking her name but the actress who played uh the original Supergirl like that should be a really cool moment because not only do you see Christopher Reeves there holy smokes always great to you know see him like in my opinion the best Superman you can't top him but he's in a scene with Supergirl because they never did like really share a scene together you know and they're supposed to be in the same universe like that was Supposed to be a cool scene, and the effect just looked like a video game, like a really poorly rendered video game, and just, oh, it was so uncomfortable, and it got a little bit of an applause when I saw it, but yeah, I don't know, it was kind of like a, well, we, we applaud the effort, we applaud the heart, you know, kind of thing. Uh, yeah, like I said, I do feel bad for the director, because you know he was thinking like, oh man, as soon as these effects are done, that just people are going to be blown away by this, and... Maybe if they had another year to work in the effects, but uh, uh, didn't really didn't really work that well. But uh, the um, a big thing I wanted to talk about in terms of the spoilers was uh, the deaths of, you know, two of the side characters in this. You know, one was Keaton's Batman, which isn't like a huge surprise. Uh, you know, it's something where you kind of go, okay, I guess, you know, th that's probably the logical conclusion they would do for this. Uh, especially, again, that it's not, I really stand by it's not the 89 Batman, because there's a scene where they're, they're breaking in to save Supergirl, but they think it's Superman, and when they see it's not, he's like, come on, let's get out of here. And I'm thinking, no, he would save the person in there. There. Uh, still, you know, like, okay, he doesn't know what this person is or anything, but if the Russians are holding her captive, you know, obviously she's an enemy of theirs, so it makes sense. So, uh, I still stand by that's a different, uh, Batman. Uh, there is something a little cool about, like, you kind of give him a couple different deaths. There's a couple, like, ways he can go out, you know, because they keep messing with the timeline. Uh, but the one that was, for me, kind of disappointing, maybe, depending on what they do is that this might be the end that we see of this Supergirl. And I'm liking this Supergirl, honestly. Like I said, I'm not going to act like, you know, it's like a phenomenal character or anything, but like I said, I really feel like that actress it brought something kind of cool to the role where I really feel like the backstory of she's supposed to protect uh, you know, a baby Clark, pretty much, and the baby doesn't make it, you know, the pod doesn't make it, like, you know, she fails her mission, and, you know, this guy, Zod, you know, is the one that did it, and she has the DNA and everything, and she's just gonna whoop his ass, man, like, that was her whole, you know, mission was to protect him, and, you know, it didn't happen, and she wakes up in this cell and everything, I mean, I don't know, I felt all that frustration in her performance, in her actions, and, you know, even in her fight scenes, the outfit looked cool, I thought, that was a very, very cool take on sort of the Supergirl outfit. Uh, so I, I want to see more of that character. I don't know if they're going to. If that's it, in my opinion, that's not enough. And so with Keaton, you already had obviously a fair amount of him as Batman. He had, you know, two movies and stuff like that. You know, this is like her first appearance. If that's it, then that's kind of a letdown. That kind of feels like, man, you could have done more with this. So I like to see more of that. Uh, they still didn't do anything with 
Ezra Miller traveling back in time to Batman v Superman, and they were doing kind of the thing where, like, he's in between worlds and he's kind of sticking his head out, saying something. Um... So maybe that's just kind of for whatever the Snyderverse we're never gonna get. Uh, which is a shame after the Snyder Cut. I really would like to have seen a Snyderverse. But at the very least, maybe they're showing how it's possible, how they can do it. You know, because uh, Barry can now uh, travel through time and everything. So I guess that's... Uh, a hint of a letdown, but nothing major. They threw in so many other little Easter eggs and everything. Um, there's one scene where, again, I started laughing and nobody else was, but I just thought it was so funny. So Supergirl's just taking this friggin' part of this tank and just smashing Zod, you know, into another part of a tank like this. I think you see it briefly in the trailer. He just is smashed into this thing like this, like an imprint of him on the tank, and he looks like Wile E. Coyote. And when she stops hitting him with the thing, and he's just standing there, his legs are out too. It just made me laugh so hard. Uh, and I, I don't think that scene was meant to be funny, but it, but it got a real big laugh after me, uh, after I saw it, I should say. Um, Affleck uh, as Batman was kind of cool to see again, uh, despite, again, he's... It's looking a little weird in the outfit. Now, I feel like his body type has changed a great deal. I mean, I don't know. That guy's still in amazing shape. I ain't got bear shape. I'll ever be. Uh, but it does seem like between sort of the costume changing a little bit, I think his body type changing a little bit, and then also uh, them altering the voice. I didn't know what to think of that, because I actually kind of liked the, the gravelly voice they gave, you know, like the altering thing like that, but they didn't have to do like the Christian Bale thing where that's supposed to be like his real voice. It's like a manipulator type thing. So I liked that in, uh, in all the versions of Affleck as Batman that we've seen, but they toned it down a lot. And now it just kind of sounds like he's doing a voice. Like I think there is a little manipulation, but there's not much. And... It's one of the few times where I kind of feel like I could use more of a Batman voice with that. It's not, like, hugely distracting, but I kind of felt like I could have used more there. Uh, it's cool to see Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman again. I know she made an appearance in uh, the last Shazam movie. Um, definitely the deus ex machina of that. <laughs> and uh, I guess kind of the same thing here, but just in the opening rather than uh, the ending. And... Um, it is a film where I wouldn't mind seeing that scene again because I couldn't hear all of what Batman and the criminal were saying with the lasso truth wrapped around their head. And I know that joke's been done to death. It always kind of makes me laugh. I don't know. Some jokes I'm always a, a sucker for. And whenever they have to just... Not only they have to tell the truth, but they're just constantly telling the truth. That stuff's fun because you can play around with what would different characters confess. Uh, so I think that stuff is kind of fun. Um, I really, really liked the last minute reveal that Barry is kind of the villain. He's the one that knocks himself out of the timeline there, and he's kind of the monster that comes out of the shadows. And when I was talking about a Disney film that tried something like this, I was thinking of Lightyear. They tried something uh, where they were supposed to take the hero and he becomes the villain through time travel because he's just too stubborn. But I feel like one of the few things they did really well with young Barry in this movie is that they showed... Older Barry, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Modern Barry, you know, the, the Barry we're following, is sort of shaping younger Barry to become this older, bitter version that just can't give up, is obsessed with his past uh, kind of thing. So all of that kind of played into... Uh, it, all that played into different parts of the character at different timelines and different emotional... Uh, uh, points in their life in different ages and stuff like that. All of that really worked where I felt like with Lightyear, it's just like, oh yeah, I was Zerg. That sucks. But then also, uh, oh yeah, it was me traveling through time. I'm just a jerk now. I, I couldn't get over or something. I, you have just the main character, Lightyear, who's already not that interesting in this version. And you just kind of say, yeah, he he's stubborn. He's an idiot. He's a jerk or something like that. He becomes the big bad guy. And that's just so boring. They tried that in Lost in Space, the movie, and it was equally as dumb. Where this one, I feel like because we have so much time with the two berries, you know, and they are the same character. They just kind of come from different timelines. Uh, and they're both kind of shaping each other. And all of that's really interesting to me, and I thought that surprisingly fed that last 20 minutes or so and made it work. 
uh, where I was really like, okay, like, this legit feels like this is where this movie should go. This makes sense, and this is who the villain should be. It doesn't feel like a cheat. I thought it really, really came together. Uh, and like I said, kind of saved the movie for me. And, and of course, the last bit with him seeing his mother again, and uh, the actress who plays the mother has to give a performance where she's saying this very obvious dialogue that most people would not say to just a random stranger, <laughs> you know, who's like crying and having a hard time, but she plays it so convincingly in a way where you feel like this woman would do this. She would be very sympathetic, and she says this dialogue in a way that feels like she is just trying to be nice, but all of it has like double, triple meanings, <laughs> you know, on top of it is just another, uh, you know, like, nail in his heart. Uh, so I thought that scene really, really worked. That was very, very effective. I, like, I could kind of feel in the theater people were, you know, like, trying to fight back some tears there. So I thought that was uh, uh, very, very effective. Uh, Clooney is Batman coming back. I thought that was funny. Uh, again, you don't know what they're gonna do with it. Probably nothing at this point. I think we just accept that's just Barry in this reality. That's just the reality he's in now. And I don't know. It's like his, uh, his father's let out of jail now, and uh, George Clooney is Batman. I don't know. That's the lighter, nicer version that I feel like the character kind of deserves. So uh, I'm okay with that. I thought that was a pretty funny ending. I like the tooth kind of comes back, too, because I was watching that thinking, like, well, what, why did the tooth pop out when he got hit by lightning? And I think the fact that it, it kind of finally has a little bit of a payoff there. Not a, like a huge one, but one that got a laugh out of me. I thought that was pretty fun. I could tell by the voice. At first, I thought it was Keaton, uh, who was on the phone. Like, yeah, I'll be there in a second. I knew it wasn't going to be Affleck. And then as the car was pulling up more, I'm like, wait, who would the other logical choice be? And I'm like, it's going to be Clooney. And then, you know, it, it revealed him. And like I said, they got a pretty big uh, laugh out of me. Um, in terms of, like, the... Uh, the future of, like, the DCEU? Like, are they gonna have Barry in a future, you know, a movie? Are they gonna have this Flash? Are they gonna have uh, this Aquaman? I mean, obviously, they tease Aquaman 2 a little bit uh, in the uh, end credits there, or the after credit sequence. And, um, I mean, I like the first Aquaman. I'm excited for a second one. But uh, it's interesting knowing that it's like, yeah, like, this is it. This is gonna sort of be the last you know, get together of these characters and they all almost appear in this movie. Obviously you don't get uh, Henry Cavill and you don't get uh, uh, Cyborg, I'm playing his name, I apologize. But, uh, you know, they got a fair amount in there and I'm sure it's just different shooting schedules and, you know, trying to trick people into thinking who is or isn't going to be in this movie. Um, yeah, no, it it's a shame the... Uh, you know, we did get a good Justice League movie, though, eventually. We got the Snyder Cut. I really did like the Snyder Cut a great deal. So, you know, I'm glad we finally got that. You know, we got something that we can at least cling to and be like, oh, what, what could have been? But also, like, what maybe is just in our imaginations. You know, they're always talking about parallel dimensions and worlds and stuff like that. So, uh, I guess we can just imagine that and... Uh, whether or not they're going to try and tie this all into, you know, what James Gunn is going to do with uh, DC right now. Um, I could go either way if they never talk about any of these characters again. I would honestly be like, all right, because you set up different dimensions, different worlds and everything. Like, you know, like every superhero franchise <laughs> is now. Uh, but um, I also wanted to say, because I forgot to put this in my original review, I like that Barry loses his powers as well, because I think that's a good test of whether or not the character can work on his own. And again, that, that trope's been done to death in all sorts of movies, but... With this character, he's always been kind of a side character. Now you have him at the center. He's the focus. So I think the idea of taking away his power, but then having another version of him have the powers, I thought was a good compromise. Because people are obviously here to see the Flash do his awesome, cool powers. So I think by t taking away from the main Barry, but then having the young Barry have the powers, and he's trying to teach him how to do these moves and the cool thing, like how to go through the door and that cool shot where it zooms into his eye and you see how, like, the particles are passing through each other. I thought it was a good way of explaining that, of showing how that worked. So I did like when the movie got weird in a good way, in a way that kind of made sense for this universe and for this character. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, what did you 
all think in terms of, uh, you know, these choices made in the movie. This is totally spoiler talk. You can talk about it all you want. I would love to know what you think of, you know, uh, uh, the, what they did with Keaton in this and what they did with Supergirl in this and, uh, you know, Affleck and Gal Gadot and all that. I'd love to know uh, your thoughts on it. Uh, you know, if you didn't let me know in the uh, other review, just let me know what you thought of the movie in general, and I will just see you next time. Take care.